All right, everybody, let's talk about slope. Uh, what I have here is an elevation model. We've got range of values from uh, negative 30 to positive 575-ish um, meters, of course. Um, and like I said, it's a 10-meter DEM. Um, I've run slope. I appended slope in degrees at the end of this, and you can see we've got a range of values from 0 to approximately 70. So that makes sense for fitting in a range of values from 0 to 90 degrees. Oops, and now we're going to run it in percent. I've just set it up here. I've got my uh, DEM. I've changed it to slope in percent with a P. And here's where I choose my units, percent rise. And I'm going to run that. And while it's running, talk about why. So ARC gives us the opportunity to calculate slope in these two units. They're kind of the standards. Um, you will often see slope reported in rise over run. So it might have a unit like meters per meter. Meters of rise, increase in elevation um, over the run or the distance over which that rise is taking place. Um, but we standardize that and change it from fraction form. And we multiply it by 100 to change it into a percent. And that is a really common unit for a lot of um, kind of secondary models, models that people have built that um, you might want to plug into. So the model authors will tell you what units you need to have your data prepped in. And so if you are being expected to input a slope layer that's in percent, but you put in something that's in degrees, you're going to get the wrong results out. Um, so you, the reason I kind of do this and change it up on you um, is because I want you to be able, be able to identify the difference between um, slope in percent and slope in degrees just by looking at the values and develop that muscle memory again of looking at the values associated with rasters and regardless of what it's called, ask yourself, what do you think this is? If you don't have units, which we don't on this, what do these values mean? Well, it depends on where in the world this is. Uh, this is a Washington DC elevation model, so it makes sense that we've got these negative values because it probably t dips into the bathymetry um, off the coast uh, and very low elevations. I'm changing this from classify, which is the standard way slope is initially output. So right away, we can see um, that they look very similar. A little bit different because we're distributing this range of colors over um, a different range of values. Here we have a, a wider range. How can we have slope of 200? And if we Google it, uh, we will find that Esri has fantastic resources online. I just Googled ArcGIS slope and there's an understanding slope page. This image here is pretty helpful uh, because it, it explains that um, percent of slope is the rise over the run multiplied by 100. And so if you have a rise that's equal to the run, if you divide those, you're always going to get 1. And if you multiply it by 100, then your 45 degree slope is a 100% slope. Anything steeper than 45 degrees is going to be a value greater than 100 for percent. And anything that's um, less steep than 45 degrees where you've got a, a shorter rise and a longer run, um, we're going to end up with values that are less than 100 because we're multiplying that fraction by 100. So we do this uh, to use to convert these uh, meters per meter fractions into integers and to you know essentially normalize it into um, a kind of a global unit percent. Um, but like I said, it's really important to understand this mostly to build that habit of understanding what these values are. What if we have a raster surface like this with a range of values from 0 to 254? Hopefully at this point, you automatically say to yourself, that's hillshade. That's the, the raster surface that we get that has a range of values that's equal to how um, color ramps are divided up into 255 bins. So this is the range of values. Um, from black to white that just indicate the how illuminated the surface is uh, based on a relatively arbitrary location for a light source and the elevation. But when we see a data set like this, you probably need to know where 
the raster is located because these could be values up in you know the three to four thousands if you're up in the Rocky Mountains um, and you need to know the units is this elevation that's being uh, reported in meters or feet because that's going to make a huge difference as well but for a coastal area this kind of makes sense um, and then I've got these two other rasters um, this could be vegetation type it could be um, solar radiation or wind speed you know, rasters can represent a lot of different things, but if I look at these and then lay them on the surface, let's put them on top of um, the hillshade, for example, using the appearance tab. Let's blend that in there. And we'll go to some areas that have some terrain. Not a lot, but boy, it sure looks like there's a relationship between the sides of these uh, topographic topographic features and the dark color. So intuitively, I could intuit that this is slope. If I didn't know what these were, I would probably recalculate slope and look at it, but that would be my starting place because it seems like there's a relationship between the steepest areas on this landscape and the darker colors. But if I know these two are slope and um, I don't know which one is in percent and which one's in degrees, well, now I know because I know that degrees is going to max out at 90 and I know that slope and percent is um, definitely going to exceed 100 if you have um, any cells that are steeper than a 45 degree slope. So this can be very reasonable. Okay, and then one last thing for the raster challenge, um, I asked you to use zonal statistics to summarize the surfaces. When you calculate zonal statistics, how do you know that you're doing it right? I think that's, that's what this whole class is about. How can we get you evaluating your own work and understanding the data well enough to know whether you're doing it right or wrong? And so here I've calculated zonal statistics for an area of interest. And I calculated um, the zonal statistics for uh, slope in degrees and slope in percent. And so I've opened the slope in degrees. And if we look at this, first thing you should ask yourself is, do the min and the max make sense for degrees? If our range of values is zero to almost 70 degrees, and you look at your raster, you know your area of interest and how it sits on the landscape, is zero to 40 reasonable? Well, looking at how it lays on the landscape, I would say that's pretty reasonable. Um, and then the rest of it, is going to relate to these values, but these are how you can double check yourself and say, did I run this on the right thing? If your min and max are something like negative, you know, 10 to 408, then that's probably not slope in degrees. That's probably you ran zonal statistics on the elevation model itself. So use the min and max to determine whether or not you've you're asking the right question with the right data. The mean is going to be the average spatially between these two numbers. You can't take the mean of 0 and 38.39 because the, the slope values aren't distributed evenly across this area of interest. What this mean is, is the mean on the actual landscape. You know, how are these slope values distributed across this area? So the average is very low relative to these peaks that we have, these high areas. Let's look at the slope in percent. Before we do that, what would you expect the mean to be relative to the mean here? You've got a, a higher range of values, a broader range. We're going up to higher values. You'd expect the mean for slope in percent to be higher because we're working with a larger range of values. And that's true. The mean, when we look at the slope summary statistics in percent, the mean is almost 8%. So 4.5 degrees versus 7.9%. When I'm evaluating your raster challenges, I look at the value that you're getting versus what I would expect and ask myself, well, how would they get that? Mean of 200 doesn't really make sense for slope. So what, what raster did they have to work with that they might have put into zonal statistics by accident? 
And, you know, maybe it's the Hillshade, maybe it's the DEM. It's a whole bunch about evaluating your own work, a little bit about how slope works, but hopefully um, both the importance of why we have two values for slope, why you need to be able to keep track, and most importantly, again, how you can evaluate to see if you're doing it correctly um, and double-checking yourself. All right.